Next month, we're getting ready to hit the ice with NHL 15. It's the first uh, first entry in the series that's coming out on next-gen consoles, new-gen consoles, perhaps more aptly named. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what that what that process has been like, that journey of bringing NHL to, to the new consoles? Uh, anytime you have new technology, and I've been around to see the last iteration of consoles, uh, it's always a little bit of an undertaking as the team has to learn what's how things work and, and things that are different. Obviously, uh, the consoles, Sony and Microsoft, do a great job of adding more technology and better things in the in the consoles, but then we have to learn them. So there's a little bit of that involved, and I think that's uh, one of the things that helps us take the first step in providing an, a newer experience to the user. Uh, we've done that this year. When you look at some of the, the things that we've changed, it's, it's really a step forward as we've learned from what the consoles can provide us, and our guys have used it to the best of their ability at this point. So I'm one of those guys who always plays it from up top. And I know you put a lot of effort into making the player models look as realistic as possible, but that's just the way I play it. Is that, is that you know, does that ever strike you as a little bit, you know, maybe you're not rewarded as much as, you, as for, for that hard work? I think, I think the reward is the user is playing the game the way he wants to play to enjoy it to the fullest extent. So if, if we make the players look good, they will look good whether they're looking at it in close up or they will look you know, good from a distance. The point is you're still going to be able to tell that it's the Vancouver Canucks versus Toronto Maple Leafs or two teams from the Liga or two teams from the SHL. It, it shouldn't really matter to us. We provide those cameras for our user and we hope that they use them whatever way they want to. So, I mean, certainly it's a series with a lot of heritage. How, how do you deal with that and in, in, in trying to, because now that it's a new, new, new generation of consoles, you don't want that heritage of that sort of easy pick up and play mechanics to sort of get lost in, in the mix. We, we really stay with a focus that when we build something, and it could be any of the new features, we, we really want to stay where it's, it's um, easily accessible to a user. Whether it's someone that hasn't played the game for 20 years, which I've seen some of those people here today at Gamescom, and, and they've picked up the game and said... I started playing with EA Hockey. I think that, that's what it was called here yeah. in Europe on Mega Drive. And you can see the difference of, of people's uh, skill levels, yet they all can pretty much pick it up. We also give them different ways to play, whether it's the, the 94 controls, which are just buttons, or a hybrid where they can use the skill stick to a certain extent and then use buttons to help them along, or fully skill stick. The goal is to not exclude anybody and let them all be able to jump in and play. We're just trying to provide different ways for them to jump in and play. Is there any, so because hockey has been changing so much over the years, and it's a very different game today than 20 years ago when you started making the NHL games, is there any sort of recent movement in hockey, sort of recent change that you feel that you're, you're starting to sort of depict and, and portray in a, in a better way in, the, in this game? I think we've gone forward and looked at different aspects of hockey, whether it's the physical side or the skill side. In the last five to eight years with the, with the, newer, uh, the newer consoles, which were the 360 and PS3, we actually improved, like we had an ability to show truly what a player can do with his stick. Uh, when we were in pixels, it was either you're, you're skating along left or you're skating along right. So it, it really has opened up that granularity of a finite control and seeing what people would regularly see when they watch a hockey game. I think that's that's what we're going for uh, as we continue forward. Uh, again, trying to give the user control without actually making it uh, too much for them to understand and play. Uh, and I think we do a pretty good job of it. Uh, I think there's always things you can improve on. I mean, everybody loves to improve how to tell someone to do something that's either complicated or even simple. But our goal is to make the gameplay so fun that the people want to pick it up, play it, and just keep playing it because they'll, they're going to see different things every time. And something like our true true hockey physics does that. The puck now is very unique physics. So when you shoot a puck and it hits someone, it's going to do what you expect out of a hockey puck. In the past, it was more ball shaped. So it did things that you weren't expecting. Uh, and even just the interaction of 12 players possibly hitting each other all at once and all of them falling down, which we couldn't do in the past. Those things are the, are the beginning of, hey, here's things that we can do now that are more and more like real life hockey. It's funny that you say the puck is more predictable because that is sort of the nature of the puck is to be unpredictable. And, and, right. and, and that's what a ball perhaps is more predictable and you sort of know where it ends up. But like if, they, if it comes up on the, on the high side and you shoot it, it's going to behave very differently for the goalkeeper than 
if, if so, you shoot it straight on. And you're right. And, and that's where, when I say predictable, it's almost like if you're a hockey player, it would be predictable that you're going, oh, if I shoot it while it's rolling, it might not go where I'm expecting it to go. But, you know, that's why a player would kind of tap it and settle it down. If he wants to know where it's going, it sometimes... To, sometimes they just hammer it because they want the goalie just not to know. And if it gets lucky, it's going to go in. So it is one of those experiences that you're saying, when we say it's more predictable, it's more, it's going to resemble what a puck would do. That, that little bit of chaos that a puck provides to a hockey player, that's what makes the game so special. I mean, uh, every sport, if it's a ball sport, that ball does things that you would not always expect. Well, a puck is, is even different because we actually have boards where the puck is interacting with. If you play FIFA, the ball goes out of bounds, somebody throws the ball to the player and he throws it back in. So it interacts very differently if it hits the glass oh yeah, or, or the board. With the glass, with the boards, whether it's hitting a body, whether it's hitting a, um, you know, if it goes out of a bounds, you're going to see that, hey, it went over the boards, we're, you know, we're going to get a face off. And even then, you know, it, it's all about that predict predictability of like what I'm watching is hockey. It's got to look like hockey. And I think in the past, the, the form of that puck was just a little too bouncy and predictable. We, we brought in a physicist to help us with this. Um, one of our programmers, he's a, a he worked in Switzerland on the Hadron Collider. So he was a very high level guy. And I was like, that's really interesting. You know, he thought this was a big challenge because it's quite a unique shape and it does quite unique things. So it was a, a pretty cool endeavor to watch him slowly work on this and eventually seeing the puck do what it does now where it rolls down all the way down the ice sometimes. And you're like, that would never have happened last year, seeing this puck rolling down the ice and you're chasing it and then knock it down and, and turn around and go up the ice. So it's, it really provides that hockey feel to it. I, I don't think anyone's really figured out because it's so different how the bounce is. Yes, different arenas and, and different boards and what's behind Whether them. It's an edge of the, if it bounces on the edge or right on the, the, the circular part or if it bounces flat and then flips up, it's, it could, anything could happen, right? That's why you see players will go get the puck, it'll bounce over their stick and then they're, they're chasing the puck or a player who just got it. Now, that, that's, what makes that, that's what makes the forecheck so interesting. You dump it in and something could happen that the defenseman doesn't scoop it up. That's why great defensemen like, you know, Lidstrom or, or, or uh, you know, um, uh, Keith, uh, Duncan Keith, they can control it because they're really good at it. That's why it's more risky to, to if you're a third line defenseman and they dump it on you, you might be a little slower and it might be a little harder to control that puck. That's what you want. You want to go charge in on them. That's, that's what this puck provides. That, that little bit of, hey, it might not go exactly the way they're expecting and I could get in there and get that puck back. So. That's what the kind of cool things it, it does. It also adds that element of sort of letting the player play it safe sometimes and actually being rewarded for, for sort of being tactical rather than sort of always going for that perfect to, to get, get. Sure, sure. Now, now a puck can deflect off a skate or something and it'll go in a direction that you'll be like, oh, that's not just going to bounce right back to me and I don't know where it's going to go. So maybe you don't make that pass into five players because it could end up on the stick of someone else, or it could, it could just, they could turn around and get now a three on two going the other way. So it does provide some of that. Um, and I think, you know, when I'm playing it, it feels completely different than it did on the older generations. It just feels like it has some new, the puck has a life of its own, even though we are in control of it, it does feel like it has a life of its own. And, and we haven't even begun talking about how the effect is with both the player physics and the puck together, and the fact that you can actually sort of get a group of players in front of the net, just like it would happen in real life. Sure. The more players in front of the net, the greater chance of scoring is almost that, you know. It's also a greater chance of getting blocked because yes. of bodies and it'll deflect off someone. I mean, our, our system now, we, we change the way the player models work. There are three layers to them. There's the body, the equipment, and then the, uh, the uniform system. So when they get hit, depending on what's underneath the uniform, it will react differently than if it would react off of before where it was all one piece so if it hits and it gets stuck in your shirt it can't it can't get stuck in your shirt as of now but who, i mean as we move forward these are the kind of things that we think this this console can help us do like some cool in in, in pieces like that but you can see that when the puck hits the jersey you'll notice it moving um it just and a simple example is a knee pad is much harder than a chest if, if a player blocks it with his chest usually it deadens and the puck will kind of stick around if it hits your shin guard it could go far away because it's hitting plastic. We have that now because the, 
it knows that there's no equipment here and no equipment on the upper thigh, but it knows there's a piece of equipment underneath. So now you see that variation, that difference. That, that's what you want, variation difference, right? Does that even influence like injuries and that sort of thing? If it hits where, where but maybe the puck isn't really what, what injures players that much. Yeah, it doesn't injure players that much. I think our, you know, our-, our Freak accidents. Yeah, but. the freak accidents, big hits, those can do it. Um, I mean, there's nothing to say that in the future as we go forward that a puck hitting a player in a rib could cause an injury. I and mean, we've had injury. We, we hurt a foot. A, a lot of injuries in the game that are if someone slaps a puck hard enough, it could hurt a player. Uh, but that's not based completely on the equipment. I mean, there's some guys that get hit in, in a piece of equipment and they still get hurt. So, but it is in the game already. So, yes. So, we're just a few weeks out. When's it coming out? It comes out September 9th in North America and September 12th here in Europe. And it's P PS3, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox 360? Exactly, all four. And no PC? No PC, not at this time. Maybe in the future? Maybe in the future. EA is always looking at new, in, uh, new opportunities and PC and whether it's PC or mobile or other things, we're always looking into those things, so yes. Thank you very much for your time. No problem, thank you. Mm -hmm.